Welcome back to Differential Calculus. I'm your tutor Ryan, and this is the continuation of part two of using the limit laws. So, we've already covered problems one through five, and now we'll be moving on to problems six and seven. We're going to be learning theorems A and B that we've seen at the beginning, and theorem B is the squeeze rule. All right, so let's get started. Example number six asks us to determine if the limit as x approaches four exists where the equation f of x is equal to x squared minus 16 for when x is greater than four and x minus four where x is less than four. Now in order to do this we need to look at theorem A which states the limit as x approaches A of f of x is equal to L if and only if the limit as x approaches A from the left of f of x and the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x are both equal to l. So we're going to have a visual representation in order for you to understand this. So let's move on to that. All right, here we have plotted the two equations involved in the question, x squared minus 16 in green and x minus 4 in red. But anything to the right of 4 for the line does not matter, and anything for, from the left of 4 for the parabola doesn't matter. So it looks like this. This is what we should be concentrating on. Now we have to determine <coughs> via math and this calculus here if the limit truly does exist at this location. And we shall see that it does. But here's how. First off, we're going to determine if f of x equals x squared minus 16 has a limit as x approaches 4 from the right. So in order to do this, we're just going to simply plug in the 4 into x squared minus 16. We get 16 minus 16, and that equals to 0. Now in order for this limit to exist, the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of x minus 4 must also be equal to the first part, part, which was 0. So let's check. f of x equals x minus 4 for x less than 4. So the limit as x goes to 4 to from the left of x minus 4 equals 4 minus 4, and that's equal to 0. So left and right side have the same value, and therefore the limit exists really simple. Alright, let's move on to example number seven. Alright, so example number seven. It asks us, show that the limit as x approaches zero of x squared plus x multiplied by sine of one over x is equal to zero. There is a bit of a problem here though. None of the known techniques we've learned so far can help us prove that the limit as x approaches zero for this equation is equal to zero. So, we're going to have to go back and we're going to have to remember the squeeze theorem, or the squeeze rule, or the pinch rule, whatever you call it. So, let's backtrack, let's look at that, let's read it over, and let's understand it. And it, it might take a while for you to actually grasp what it's asking you, and when you see in a, a question that asks you to do this, you might not actually realize that it's the type of question that requires you to use the squeeze theorem. So let's, I, let's hope that I can get across to you what exactly is required, what it looks like, and how it functions. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, the squeeze theorem. Theorem, letter B. If f of x is less than or equal to g of x, and g of x is less than or equal to h of x, when x is approaching a, except possibly at the location a, and the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l, and it's also equal to the limit as x approaches a of h of x, then it follows that the limit as x approaches a of g of x is also equal to l. Now the yellow text to the right explains this a little better, hopefully, so I'm going to read that to you. This means that if the functions f of x and h of x have the same limit value, l, at the point a, then g of x is squeezed between them and is forced to have the same limit value, l, at that point a. So now we're going to do an example and show you how to work this out. Alright, so we need to show that the limit as x approaches 0 of x squared plus x multiplied by sine of 1 over x is equal to 0. Now, we know something about the sine function. It's bounded by 1 and negative 1. Basically, the squeeze rule can work for just about any peri periodic function or any other examples where they don't tell you what the middle function is and the functions on the left and right that are squeezing it have the same limit at that point. That's when you should be able to queue up and think, this is where I need to use the squeeze theorem. Alright, so, <coughs> sine of 1 over x, bounded by negative 1 and 1, and positive 1. Okay, so, 
If we multiply sine of 1 over x by x squared plus x, we're going to get negative x squared plus x less than or equal to x squared plus x sine 1 over x less than or equal to positive x squared plus x. And for a visual example later on, I have labeled the equations f, g, and h of x in red, blue, and yellow so that I can use a visual interpretation of the squeeze theorem in order to show you what exactly happens at these points. All right, so first, what we need to do in order to determine the limit as x approaches zero of x squared plus x times sine of one over x, we need to determine the limits of f of x and h of x. The limit as x approaches zero of negative x squared plus x is equal to zero when subbing in zero. And the limit as x approaches zero of x squared plus x is also equal to zero. So we now we know what the limits on the left and right side are. So that's what it's gotta be bounded by. So therefore, by the squeeze theorem, we have proved that the limit as x approaches zero of x squared plus x times sine of one over x is equal to zero. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you a visual representation of how this works but not using the specific equations used in this example, just random equations that are drawn out in order to illustrate the point. Hopefully, it shall do so. So here we can see our example equation in red, f of x, and our example equation in yellow, h of x. Now, there's an example equation, g of x, in blue. Now, at the point A, shown on the graph, h of x and f of x both have the same limit, l. And because g of x is bounded by these two and is squeezed by them via the squeeze theorem, we can also de we can determine, and you can see it visually, that g of x also has the same limit at that point. So through the processes which I have just shown you, you can determine the limit of, of, an, of an equation or a function in the middle via the squeeze theorem. Now I don't plan on doing anything more on the squeeze theorem. It's not hard. It's just that it takes a little while to actually grasp. And when it comes to de like seeing it and saying, yes, this is something that I have to use the squeeze theorem for, that's what it really gets a little bit more difficult. But with practice, the squeeze theorem will become very easy. Now, I said I wasn't planning on doing anything else, but if you guys request it, I will do a whole video on the squeeze theorem using just squeeze theorem examples so that you actually are ready to tackle just about any squeeze theorem problem. So, by request only.